Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of an introduction to organic chemistry, and in particular, on nomenclature. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button, and whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. Welcome to lesson one of three in this tutorial, covering nomenclature. This is the first video in our series of three lessons on the topic of Introduction to Organic Chemistry. Here are the key learning objectives for this tutorial. First, we will look at nomenclature, then at naming compounds, and finally at drawing them. Here are the AQA specification points we'll be covering in today's lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a quick read through them before we begin. We'll start by looking at how to draw formulae for certain organic compounds. There are three key terms that we'll be discussing in this section. There are three different types of formula, which are displayed, structural and skeletal. The displayed formula is the fully drawn out version of a molecule. This will show each of the bonds in full. We can see the displayed formula for hexane here with each of the bonds drawn out. The structural formula is the molecule written out with each carbon listed as separately. This is the structural formula for hexane shown here. Each of the carbons has been listed. Finally, we have the skeletal formula. This is a representation of the organic compound in which the carbon chain is shown by lines with no carbons or hydrogens drawn. Here, we can just see the skeleton for hexane. Here are the three types of formula again with their respective representations. Now, we'll be moving on to the rules for nomen nomenclature. To name any compound, there are some key rules to remember. First, we must determine the length of the carbon chain. This is key as it gives you the stem of the compound's name. The key ones you need to know are shown here. The stem will change depending on the number of carbons in the compound. Now we need to find the functional groups. These will give us the prefix and the suffix of the compound. The key ones you need to know are shown here in this table. We have 14 different types in total, with a different prefix and suffix for each one. The third step is to find the longest chain of carbons. We must ensure that the carbon bonded to the functional group is given as small as number as possible. Here, we can see two possible names, pent-4-ol or pent-2-ol. However, we know that we need to give the carbon bonded to the functional group the smallest number possible. This means that pent-4-ol is incorrect, whilst pent-2-ol would be the correct answer. Now we can determine the suffix. We can do this as part of the name in front of the suffix, such as pent-2-ol. Next, let's determine the prefixes. Other functional groups and carbon side chains can be included as prefixes. We'll be writing these in alphabetical order, but we need the number of carbon that they're attached to. Here, 
we can see that we've included the functional group and the carbon side chains in the name as prefixes. If you've got any double or triple chains in the compound, you'll need to adapt for these. If there are identical side chains, you can use di for two, tri for three, and tetra for four. Here, we can see where there are three identical side chains, we have a triol. Where, where there are two, we have a diol. Here's another summary of the key rules for naming compounds. First, we need to determine the length of the carbon chain, then find the functional groups. Next, we give the longest chain of carbon numbers and use the groups to determine the prefix and the suffix. Finally, if there are any double or triple chains, we must adapt for these. Now let's look at drawing these compounds. First, we must draw out the carbon chain. When drawing, we can use skeletal or displayed formulae. Here, we can see the carbon chain for hexanol. Next, we use the suffix to add functional groups. We can add the primary functional group given by the suffix. We can use the number to help us identify exactly where to draw it. Here, we can see we have hex 1-ol. This means we need to draw an OH off the first carbon. Next, we can add the carbon side and secondary functional groups. Again, we'll need to use numbers to do this. Here, we can see that we have a methane off the second carbon and two OH groups. One of these is off the first carbon, whilst the other is off the fifth. Now, we can add in the remaining hydrogens. We've put in all our functional groups, so we can add in any remaining hydrogens in the gaps available. Here, we can see that all the remaining gaps have been filled. This is a recap of the key rules for drawing out compounds. It's really important to get your carbon chain right in the first place, then add a suffix and the carbon side and functional groups. Once you've got all the parts to your structure, you can finally add in any remaining hydrogens. We've now covered both the specification points for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you feel unsure about. We've now completed lesson one. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-level chemistry or visit our website studymind.co.uk for past paper compilations by topic and specification.